commenting for attention has been a really powerful strategy for me. And then over the years, I realized that I was not the only one doing it. And many SMB, technical SMB, technical founder were doing that as well. The only problem though is that it takes a lot of energy. It does. It, yeah. <laughs> it still it, it still takes a lot of energy. It still takes a bit of time. And the reason why I'm saying that is because when I make comments, I don't say things like, like good posts. I don't say things like thank you for that. Time. That's easy. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. Perfect. Yeah. The reason why I'm saying that is because if I were to do great posts, thank you for sharing, I am no different like the other 100 people. And it's not going to make me stand out. Nobody is going to say, oh my goodness, Jason, I don't have <laughs> he's that. a thought leader. You <laughs> must, must be a genius. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Sales Consultant Podcast. In this interview, I chat with Jason Tan, the founder of Engage AI. We shed light on the strategies that propelled the platform to an impressive 30,000 users in just three months. Jason recounts his journey as a technical founder and the challenges he faced in sales and marketing, which ultimately brought him to explore alternative methods to building his business. He particularly emphasizes the effectiveness of engaging with prospects through LinkedIn comments. This discussion highlights the significance of personal branding, user-friendly features of Engage AI, and presents some eye-opening statistics about the sales opportunity on LinkedIn. And I promise throughout this interview, you're going to gain some valuable insights into the strategies that drove Engage AI's rapid growth, which you'll in turn be able to implement for yourself or for your team right away. Okay, everyone, we have a very important conversation uh, for you here. So stick around. If you're trying to bolster your uh, social selling strategy for 2024 and your effectiveness on LinkedIn, you definitely want to tune into this, this interview. I have a very special guest with me, uh, Jason Tan, who is the founder of Engage AI, which is a LinkedIn Chrome extension that allows you to pretty much engage and comment on your ICP's uh, posts at scale, uh, while remaining, or I should say, while maintaining human agency so that nothing gets posted without your sort of approval, none of that wonky, crazy posts that we, we see happening with the old versions of these AI tools, right? So we're going to talk about how you can leverage a tool like Engage AI. But before we talk about the tool and how wonderful it is and how effective it can help people be, Tell us a little bit, Jason, uh, about why and how you went about developing uh, Engage AI. Before I start Engage AI, I had a AI and data consulting company where I provide the consulting and delivery services for enterprises here in Australia. And like many other uh, SMB owner, especially like the technical founder, being a, oh, sorry, I should highlight that I, I am more like a technical founder. So I, right. I am a, turning to an entrepreneur and uh, wanting to kickstart my company. And like many other technical founder, marketing and sales is just simply not nature for us. So mm. you imagine that uh, go out networking is a little bit challenging for me because it needs to talk to people. Although I have got better since then, and uh, LinkedIn was a good start for me because LinkedIn at the early, in the early day, it's sort of like my, it's almost like my, I, I don't feel as close as it, as it is. So like engage on LinkedIn, posting on LinkedIn in the early day was one of the channel that I used to go to prospect and keep stay in touch with the assisting network. And then that is how I got work from that. So uh, uh, one of the things that I, and I learned over the year is that that is this idea called uh, commenting for attention and mm -hmm. apparently a lot of the founder in the startup world have used that strategy uh, from the advice from the VC where whenever your prospect is posting, when your VC is posting, uh, when your ICP is posting, go and engage and comment on them, on right. their post. And when you do it multiple times again and again, with good quality comment, of course, then people will start paying attention to you. And that is how then I start using that strategy for in the early day to get the attention of my prospect. Because in the early, early day, I wasn't really into posting because writing content, writing social posts was not really my thing. I find it very challenging. That's an important all. point. That's a, that's a huge point. Yeah. yeah I mean, because that's all you hear about, right? Like that's when you... 
scroll through YouTube and LinkedIn and other social media platforms, all the thought leaders on personal branding. Yeah, I think it's 80% slanted towards creating audience through posting and through creating oh, wow. content. Yeah. Exactly. I think the analogy that I would use for that is that not everyone is ready to become a public speaker, but you can still go to the event and then networking by simply talking with people. Right. Right. Yeah. That's a great analogy. It is a great analogy. I mean, a lot of us, <laughs> uh, I think in, in the recent years, pre and post COVID, when there was in-person events, some companies foregoed even budget for a booth and would just send people to network yeah, you know, exactly. at the at the event, right? And so to your point, yeah, you don't have to get a booth. You don't have to be a public speaker. You can go to the event, still network and find opportunities. And that's what we're saying as an analogy here with, with LinkedIn. I love that. Exactly. And commenting it for attention has been a really powerful strategy for me. And then over the years, I realized that I was not the only one doing it. And many SMB, technical SMB, technical founder were doing that as well. The only problem, though, is that <clears throat> it takes a lot of energy. It does, it, yeah. <laughs> it, still, it, it still takes a lot of energy. It still takes a bit of time. And the reason why I'm saying that is because when 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 I make comments, I don't say things like, like great post. I don't say things like, thank you for that. That's easy. Yeah, say, exactly. It's yeah. Perfect. yeah. The reason why I'm saying that is because when I, if I were to do great post, thank you for sharing, I am no different like the other 100 people. And it's not going to make me stand out. Nobody is going to say, oh my goodness, Jason, I don't <laughs> he's that. a thought leader. You <laughs> must, must be a genius. <laughs> so it, it will never really get the attention. That's, a, that's what I found out. So I, all, I always make an effort, like I, I read the entire post, and then I, sometimes I look at their profile as well. Sometimes I even look at their, some of their pre-posts as well. And then I, I only make the comment. So that way, I am contributing something to what they have already To the conversation, done. yeah. I mean, again, going back to the analogy of being in person, you're not going to just sit there in the circle of people and say, oh, good point, good point. Oh, yeah, good point. You know, I concur, I concur. You know, you're you're going to provide perspective. Exactly. You're going to interject your, your opinion. Uh, you're going to counter the opinion and debate a little bit in a friendly, cordial manner, right? So you're going to be memorable and thought provoking so that and again if you do this repeatedly again if you see each other at multiple events like if you continue with the exactly. analogy right that's when it's yeah. like hey you know maybe there's something here and maybe it'd be worth having a more concentrated conversation while one sometimes exactly exactly and that is how i often break the eyes and then start the conversation mm -hmm. like if we talk again and again then it's natural just to start a conversation. So that way, stop me being spammy. I, I, and I no longer have to use those automation tools that just send, sending the drip messaging to people. And yeah, I with the wacky emojis. I don't and stuff. Yeah. why people are still <laughs> using it. <laughs> but I think that's, you know, I think that's important for the listeners, right? Like that's uh, what a lot of people, and that's what some of the people on here might be thinking about when they think of a Chrome extension to help them comment on yeah. posts at scale is, that this thing's going to be putting all kinds of stuff out there and I'm not going to know I'm going to, it's going to be, it's going to be counterproductive and it's going to make me look stupid effectively. It's not going to do what I thought it would, it was intended to, but, and I think that's what we want to draw attention to here in this conversation is that if you were go, if you went to their website, you would see right away the imagery that they have, the visualization of what it looks like when this tool is running and at the end you have to hit post. So it's not as if the tool is posting on your behalf. It's merely crafting recommendations. And so I think we all are familiar with that. We've all used ChatGPT by now or some other AI tool where we kind of prompt it, which is the post in this case. And then we ask for uh, some sort of recommendation and that's what ChatGPT will spit out. And then we'll, no, no, I don't like that. Tone, tone this down, tone that up. You can throttle the tool. And so uh, I found it to be actually, it seems really easy to use. And I love that it's in, again, it just shows me right here. It's in multiple languages, like almost any language, guys. So that, that, that makes it cool. Okay. But how do we know it's safe though? That's, you know, how do we, because I was doing some reading and I know that LinkedIn definitely has put people in LinkedIn jail for using automation and yeah. different types of tools. 
And there's tools that even LinkedIn will promote as successful tools like Lucia and Lusha is a plugin I've used before. And even LinkedIn uh, sings their praises in, in, in the ecosystem. So with Engage AI relatively new in the scene, how do we know it's safe and compliant and we're not going to end up getting our, our profiles banned, if you will? Absolutely. I think really number one thing that I, number one rules that I always follow is don't go over crazy. So especially understanding like your your LinkedIn account, like is it an old account? Is it a new account? Do you have a sales navigator subscription? Is it multiple people managing your account? All those sort of things are super, super important because those are the things that LinkedIn often use to measure whether the activities that carry out on your account is completely by bot or by human. And again, with Engage AI, what we are really suggesting over here is that we help you to make better comment. We give you some, we help you to get over the writing block. We get give you better suggestion rather than saying, thank you for sharing. And then right. we help you get to the goal faster. But by no means, you should try to do 20,000 comment per day because it is humanly impossible to be able to do that. Within the LinkedIn, we'll pick it up and say, okay, this account has got 20,000 comment per day. And that exceeds the threshold of humanly possible. That that happened, even though you put you you are the one who control that, they still don't like it because the AI ML uh, has oh, it's spammy. Happen. I mean, at, at the it's essence spammy. of it, that's it's spammy. just they they want to avoid at all costs any sort of spam like behavior uh, on the platform. Exactly. And so, what I'm hearing you say is that behaviorally, they'll identify that you're using some sort of tool because you would have seen a spike in your comments, right? right? The tool would have seen that now all of a sudden you went from five posts and comments a day to 20,000 comments a day. Yeah, you're definitely mm -hmm. gonna send up red flags and end up in LinkedIn jail most likely. Mm -hmm. And just for the record, I was doing some digging before here and what I could find online is that there is actually no limit for the number of comments a person can make However, again, what they do caution you is that they are looking for two things to detect potential spam in the comments. And that is a, the behavioral thing that we just talked about. And then there's some detection ability that they can look in some, some manifest, the extensions manifest file to see if there's one there. But I think that would only be if you were triggered through behavioral patterns. There are other limitations that people should be aware of with LinkedIn. 100 invites per week or approximately 20 to 25 connection per uh, request per day. Profile view limits, 500 a day, probably not even humanly possible. 2,000 a day if you have a paid account. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> In terms of messages, it's recommended to limit your outreach to 100 messages per week. For free accounts, 150 Per week for for paid accounts again the thing here is be respectful be thoughtful be relevant and it would be hard to run up against these these throttling limits yeah, i probably would add to that is the amount of those uh activities so i.e mm. the amount of the connection request uh from combination requests re, uh messaging and profile visit and commenting the sum of all of those activities uh, it shouldn't be way too high as well. It shouldn't, especially you don't want to see a big spike to, to the extent that it's humanly impossible. Got it. Okay. Well, that's good information for everyone that's considering upping their game in 2024 around LinkedIn and social selling effectiveness. One thing we, we pointed out earlier was that comment, that liking posts or posting content, there's these ways that we build audiences, but far too often you don't hear about the importance of engaging proactively in, in your content. Because I think the, the analogy that I'll give is like an inbound, outbound sales development strategy. From an, from an inbound perspective, right, demand gen and marketing are going to create these programs. They're going to create these inbound leads. And that's great for a lot of companies can is, is the end all be all. Uh, there's some organizations where that's not sufficient and they still have numbers to hit. And so they have to go proactive, go outbound and try and drum up business proactively one by one. And that's this, right? You, it's having that yeah. blended strategy of definitely create the content, create your audience, be a thought leader. But at the same time, part of being a thought leader is engaging thoughtfully in dialogue with other comments. And I would say it doesn't have to just be in your ICP. It could be partners. It could be 
podcast exactly. guests. Uh, that's actually exactly. how we came to meet here is that Jason <laughs> saw one of my posts, commented in the post, hopped into, you know, connected with me, hopped into the messaging and the start of a conversation. We probably talked, I would say, in in mail for a good two days back and forth, yeah. just a chat uh, casually before we came to the conclusion that this would be a really good conversation to be you know for the for the podcast and i think that's a perfect example of how the tool can work for for other folks right building up some rapport in the comment section publicly and then at some point you you reach this apex in the conversation uh mm -hmm. publicly where it's like you know let's take this offline let's get into a, an in-mail uh dialogue and again just keep it casual you remember you're on uh, LinkedIn this is a networking platform. So no needy messages. You know, I commented twice. Don't be transactional, right? Like I commented exactly. twice and now I'm asking if you do it in mail and then I'm asking for the meeting. Like let's, let's, let's this thing oh, yeah. brew organically, right? You push We're not oh, recommending yeah. you push this too far. And, and, uh, and if I were to bring that whole uh, analogy into the networking event, and that is this gentleman that I follow, uh, Tyron, he used this pink suit uh strategy he was basically saying that you don't want to be the pink suit guy where you get all the attention in a way that you unwanted attention he said um after sending two messages and then straight away ask people to buy your stuff or sending them a calendar link to book a meeting with you do you do that in the net the real life networking event i mean do you like hey uh derek jason ah lovely to meet you in the event uh i sell AI consulting. Do you want to buy my services? <laughs> it doesn't have that life. Wine and dine me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Warm it up a little bit. Warm, you know, we talk about warming up our emails to email filters. It's the same thing here. Warm them up to the idea, right? Let exactly. some of this pursue organically. If you truly have synergy and alignment, then I think some of it will happen naturally. There's a little bit of a nudge there for sure. Uh, we don't want to make this seem like a total love fest but at the same time you know be be realistic with your expectations the the point that again i don't want to miss here in this discussion is the, the the span of the opportunity that's available on linkedin uh i think some people who are on linkedin today and are thinking about being more active in their social selling and, and linkedin effectiveness um might think that it's saturated might think exactly. that I, you know I, I really i'm late to the that. game <laughs> yeah. yeah i really think linkedin has so many opportunity because when you have a sales navigator account it really allows you to filter down to exactly your target icp mm. and where else can you find this sort of tool i mean even when you go to that working event the random person that you meet you have no idea who they are until you speak with them for at least 10 minutes before you can figure out who exactly they are. Whereas LinkedIn allow you to be able to do exactly all of that before you even start talking to them. Once you have done that, you go and start engaging with them. And the other thing that I just want to point out is that you early on touched that this could be more like a outbound strategy rather than the inbound strategy. I very much agree, but I also equally highlight that that is a 20% chance of the inbound strategy in place. Very good point. And right. the reason why I'm saying that is because just think about like when you are engaging with your ICP and this ICP uh, is a SVP of this enterprise. And if you really can start uh, build a rapport and often uh, they would be kind and polite enough to respond to your comment as well when you do it that again and again with a thoughtful comment what do you think about their peer who are seeing that sort of comment and have seen that sort of conversation having in the public place public place like uh on, on, like a on fireside the chat it's uh they're, it's like the two experts on stage at the event having a fireside exactly. chat and your your exactly. icp's in the audience watching this and saying hey he's he knows his stuff yeah Great exactly. analogy. So, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So it may not necessarily bring you uh, other ICP all the time, but then people right. are starting to notice you as well. And that is how I, to be honest with you, that that, that is how we first started uh, Engage AI, we, how we got the 3,000 user in the first two months. Because, oh, wow. because while, initially, while our current target is still the technical SMB owner, but then 
because the cost of our product is only thirty dollars, we can't afford to do. If we want to have three thousand technical SMB uh, powder, we need to tr do it for three thousand uh, technical powder, and we know that we can't do it in that short amount of time. So what we did is we think about all right. Who is the ta our target audience? Is the technical founder, technical SMB owner, but who exactly are their audience? Their target audience. Then we realize that aha, right, their target audience usually is the SVP in the enterprise. So what that basically means is rather than commenting in the strategy that we this time we use is purely inbound. We then, instead of commenting on the technical SMB order or the technical founder, we went on just focusing on commenting, making funny, making useful, making thoughtful comment on the SVP of the enterprise. So on your prospects, prospects posts. Correct. I love this. Okay. Daisy Correct. chain this for and then, me. Okay. And, and then we, and when, I make, when we make that sort of comment, then we know that those profiles are often followed by our prospect. And then when our prospects seeing those comments, they were like, aha, who is this guy? He's very funny. He's very thoughtful. And then when they do it again and again. And he's everywhere. He's in my comments. He's in my <laughs> prospect's comments. <laughs> exactly. So, so they, will went, they will then go on to check our profile. And then we make sure that within our profile, we have something that is capturing their attention that is free. And then we get them to the, our website. And then we have the uh, uh, lead magnet and then entice them to sign up for free. So that's how funnel. we get yeah. 3,000 uh, people in the first place. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, I, I thank you for answering that. I think uh, any product-led organization out there is going to appreciate that breakdown, that play-by-play, -play, because that's the model uh, that <laughs> a lot of folks should be thinking about using in a similar sense. Let's let's go down a, a quick just uh sort of fire shot at some of these questions about the product. So other languages, right? So you do support other languages. How many, are there any- Any languages that have GPT support. Uh, and then the cool thing about this is that you don't have to tell he, you don't have to tell it what languages it, it, it should be writing. It actually automatically figure out the, the languages of the post and then it will respond in the languages in those posts. Okay, very good. And does it work in Sales Navigator as well? Uh, not 100% at this stage. It's a lot harder to embed our cell in there, so we are still working on it. Okay, I think you said using Zapier to execute back on the main platform is kind of a workaround, right? Okay. That is correct. So Zapier or CIM like HubSpot, uh, Mate.com is another way that if you already have a CRM, uh, where you keep track of your client, you keep track of your prospect, you are able to integrate with Engage AI and then tell us exactly who they are and we monitor them for you and we alert you when they post and then you can just focus on those people that uh, you care about. So that's probably the other thing that I want to point out is that when you go to LinkedIn newsfeed, one of the biggest challenges that I heard from a lot of the user is that LinkedIn sold them whoever the one they want to sell them, even though you have that bell button, but they are still not seeing the people that right, they care right, about. Right. Uh, and and that's, people, that's been probably it's for 10 years now on all the platforms. They don't do the chronological updates anymore. It's just algorithm based and they think they know right. what you want to see. So they put that in front of you. And if your client, your ICP's post doesn't keyword match what you are supposedly interested in it, then you don't see the post. Um, exactly. So yeah, so so you're exactly. notifying me if I have Engage AI running uh, and letting me know that, hey, they just posted, which is what Sales Navigator feed does as, as well, but you're bringing special attention to this somehow? Um, so what we do is that we put them, all of them into a single screen. And then all you do is that you will see like 10 or 50 posts. Oh, so you have your own breakout for, for just very good. Okay. Okay, cool. That is correct. And so if I have 20 happen. minutes to go through, because this uh, thing goes back to what we were saying before, you know, it's, a, it's a lot of work to comment. I mean, I it, it's out, but let me, this is what, what my thing is, uh, my experience. I all see uh, a comment that I want, I mean, a post that I want to comment on. But like most people, um, 
you know, I'm working off of LinkedIn using my iPhone and I'm multitasking and there, I have a small window of the 20,000 windows I take <laughs> throughout the day to go look at LinkedIn. Uh, I'm exaggerating, but you know, I'm usually kind of like just spot checking LinkedIn in and out and I see something that I want to engage in. And I know if I, I know I got to write a compelling, okay, let me think about this. Let me edit this. Cause to your point, I want to be a thought leader. I want my you know, comments to be uh, useful and, that extra little bit of effort is enough to deter me from two great posts, super interesting, maybe drop a couple of emojis, you know what I mean? Or just hit the insight like button or something, but that, that, you know, not getting something per, uh, in there that's real, real thought provoking. So it does take a, a, a lot of time to do this for, for some people. But if I am using your tool, you have the people that I'm following with Engage AI parsed out with their posts mm. ready for you to provide some suggestions where I could hit edit, post, edit, post, and kind of get through there in a rapid, in a rapid exactly. time. Exactly. I probably mm. just add two more points into that. Okay. And I often talk about technical founder uh, in, in, what, in the things that I have said in the last 20 minutes, simply because for some people where sales and marketing is a natural skill set for them, they were born with it, making a comment is very easy for them. Well, I mean, I'm that I'm that person, and I'm telling you, it's even hard for me, you know. And, and so, and, and it may be that I'm busy and rushed, and I'm not disciplined enough to kind of just sit there. I mean, I I do comment. People, you you guys who follow me, you know, I'm I'm, I'm in the comments. But my point is, I would comment. I would like to comment more, even as that business yeah. founder, not the technical yeah. founder persona, right? Exactly. So imagine how it would be even more challenging for the technical exactly. founder where exactly. commenting, social selling, marketing is just not our nature skill set. So that is why this we this is born. That's why I create this too. The second thing I'll probably add into that is you would say that often you you use things in, in between and meetings and also you use it on your phone. I want to point out that we actually have mobile app the where you can actually use the oh. mobile app to copy and paste the link of the post and then use it on our app, uh, the mobile app to come out a comment to that you can use as well. It's still so the mobile app is still experiment super super early, but then it works. It it still solves the problem. It's just not right. as intuitive as uh embedded as like and it's not phone. built in. Obviously. It's not built in at that point either. Excuse me, because I just exactly. hit the mic. Um. Okay. Very good. And how many profiles can one follow at any given time using your tool? Because, I mean, I can think of 100, 200 profiles I want to be following and, and keeping up with and commenting in, but is that the right way to do it? Is that even possible? I would probably say keep it to 100 because in the B2B world, I, I think that's the number that uh, makes sense. I have seen some people were adding like 10,000 people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I just I just think that it's not possible. We are not selling a pair of sneakers. We are selling uh, B2B services that cost tens of thousand dollars. It takes time to warm them up. This is not a this is not a hundred percent automation tool where you just right. set and forget. So I and it's not meant to necessarily like accelerate. I mean, in some cases, I guess you could say it, it would, but. Uh, you know, get to our point earlier, it's a cautious message, you know, don't try to use this so much as a shortcut to become spammy. I mean, we're not trying to create what the sales engagement platforms did for email with this yeah, effectively, exactly. right? We, yeah, we want to be thoughtful still. We're tr still trying to abide by the concept and principles of uh, know your audience, be, be very selective with who you're, you know, picking. Again, you're recommending only a yeah. hundred. In, in our planning session, guys, he, he said, 25 to 50 but you know just to even oh, be wow. on the safe side so uh yeah. just to recall that but yeah i think um these are all really good points so the you mentioned the pricing earlier that it was only 30 dollars per user i have a question about that though um what's the breakdown in your clients if you, if you if you can like are are these a lot of individuals who are buying this to help them bolster their personal brand and whatnot or are you seeing organizations putting this in the corporate card and, and being doing corporate purchases for their team to enable yeah. their 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 groups uh, what are you seeing I there i think that at the moment what we are seeing is at least 80% of the paid user 
uh, are the SMB owner. So I, they are one person team or they are the team of like few, for few people to up to 20 people. Okay. Uh, they are all from all around the world. 80% are in that category. But we definitely see there's 20% of the B enterprise BDM who is using and paying for these services. The only problem though, and that is something that we are working on is that they are either paying with their own uh, credit card uh, or I don't know whether they pay with the corporate credit card and how do they make a claim for it. That's the bit that I'm not 100% sure, but we are in the process of like listing on the AWS and also other marketplace, mm -hmm. cloud marketplace. So hopefully when we successfully make that happen, then they can go to their boss and say, these two is the one that got them the meeting uh, from the client yesterday. And then when the boss want to pay for it, they can go to the, they can just follow the existing uh, procurement pipeline and then purchase it from AWS, Azure, or GCP. Okay, very good. Okay, well, uh, I think that about wraps things up. I wanna drop uh, just a few statistics on you guys before I let you go. Uh, the opportunity on LinkedIn is wide open still. You're, you're not late. Uh, just make sure you round out your social selling strategy, your LinkedIn effectiveness plan with engaging proactively with your ICP, with your partners, with whoever you're you know, looking to do business with. Now, put this in perspective, 137 million daily users in the U.S., in the, in the U.S. I mean, there's a billion members across 200 countries on LinkedIn, but in the U.S. alone, uh, 137 million daily users. Wow. So there's a, a lot of TAM there, if you will. Um, okay. Another really important stat, I think, to, to point out there is that companies that prioritize social selling are 51% more likely to reach their sales quota. This is, of course, according to some LinkedIn research, a little, maybe a little biased there, but uh, another stat, 92% of buyers are willing to engage with an industry thought leader. 92% of people, it's wide open. You know, 137 million daily users, most of those users uh, are up in age and 50% uh, of them earn over $75,000 a year. And look at this, 72% of people only generate zero to 10% of their total sales from LinkedIn. So again, opportunity is vast. 92% of people will accept, you know, conversations and meetings with thought leaders, but only zero, maybe 10% of revenue at an individual company is being created through this channel. So wide open opportunity, take full advantage of it. Check out Engage AI, engage-ai.co. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Sales Consultant Podcast. If you'd like to support the show, it would go a long way if you were to write a short review on the listening app of your choice.